Hey everybody, Smart Silver Stacker here. Hope you're doing well. This whole de-dollarization thing has become a bit of a trope now in 2023. It seems like it's a hot topic of conversation that you're seeing come up all over the place, even in the mainstream media. Even though as of now, as of this time, the dollar still reigns supreme around the world. It still makes up the majority of international foreign exchange reserves. It's still the number one currency in international trade settlement, but even Janet Yellen has now warned that the weaponization of the dollar through financial sanctions could potentially undermine U.S. dollar hegemony around the world. In that interview, she did provide the caveat that the dollar remains appealing as a reserve and a means of facilitating trade due to the depth of U.S. capital markets and also the rule of law. But the weaponization of the dollar and the imposition of sanctions are exactly the opposite of the rule of law, at least from the viewpoint of some. The freezing of Russian US dollar denominated assets following their invasion of Ukraine last year, that sent a strong message to nations around the world. If you are in US crosshairs in the geopolitical sense, then your assets may be forfeit. And that is exactly why we are witnessing an acceleration in the calls for and steps towards de-dollarization. Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva being the latest voice to call for a reduced role for the U.S. dollar in the global economy. At a recent speech delivered at the BRICS Development Bank in Shanghai, Lula had this to say. Every night I ask myself why all the countries have to base their trade on the dollar. Why can't we do trade based on our own currencies? Who was it that decided that the dollar was the currency after the disappearance of the gold standard. And this is not just bluster from the Brazilian leader. Recently, Brazil and China signed an agreement to eliminate the dollar from their bilateral trade, which is not insignificant. Brazil possesses the biggest economy in South America, and China is their largest trading partner. We are talking about more than $150 billion worth of trade annually that will now be conducted in either the Brazilian real or the Chinese renminbi. The BRICS nations, that's Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, are already shifting towards the use of existing local currencies to settle bilateral international trade. And that seems to be the plan for at least phase one of this de-dollarization agenda. This was confirmed recently by Deputy Chairman of the Russia State Duma, Alexander Babavkov, while speaking at the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum hosted in New Delhi. He had this to say. Our goal should be focused on writing new rules in the financial sphere in order to enable the use of an already common currency. Doesn't matter whether it's a digital ruble, a digital rupee, a digital yuan, or some other currency, but this currency must follow the laws of our respective nations. So that's phase one. But phase two of this de-dollarization plan may involve an entirely new currency a BRICS currency, something we have heard rumors about for years now. However, the speculation may become a reality in the very near future, and in today's video we're going to examine some of the possible ways a new BRICS currency could manifest itself, and how that might affect the global economy, and also precious metals. Because there is some strong evidence that gold and silver could be involved. So, let's get to it. Did you know SD Bullion is giving away a monster box of 2023 Silver Eagles? Sign up today at sdbullion.com slash sweepstakes. So it was back in January that Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov made a statement to the effect that the first steps towards a new BRICS currency would be taken at the BRICS summit this August in South Africa. Now, when it comes to the idea of a BRICS currency, there seem to be two camps. One is that it is inevitable and this currency will absolutely replace the dollar or at least become a significant global rival and it will dethrone the dollar as the world's sole reserve currency. While the other is that no BRICS currency will be created, there's simply not enough cohesion between the disparate members of the BRICS organization to enable the level of coordination necessary to create a new rival financial system. And if you listen to my interview with John Lee over the weekend, you know that he falls into that camp, and this is quite a legitimate argument. The BRICS nations, they do very greatly in language, culture, 
history, geography, and their respective economies. But they do have one very important trait in common, and that is a strong desire to end US dollar global hegemony. So will a BRICS currency instantly spell the death of the dollar? Not likely. But is it impossible for BRICS to give it a go? Also probably not quite accurate. And I suspect that as usual, the truth lies somewhere in between these two positions. And we may not have to wait very long to find out, because if what Sergei Lavrov tells us is true, then we may see an outline for a BRICS currency as early as this August, only four months from now. And what might that BRICS currency look like? Well, let's examine some of the possibilities and what kind of an impact they might have on the global economy. So the first variant of a BRICS currency is the fiat option, a basket of the five BRICS national currencies similar to the IMF's SDRs or special drawing rights could be created by the BRICS development bank. Some have given this hypothetical currency basket the name R5. This is a moniker derived from the five BRICS currencies, all beginning with the letter R. The real, the ruble, the rupee, the renminbi, and the rand. Now, this hypothetical basket of currencies, it could be the next logical step from the current arrangements, which involves the use of local currencies. Having one BRICS fiat currency, even if it's only for the purpose of settling international payments between participating countries, could streamline trade outside of the dollar system. And this plan does have some potential snags, though. To begin with, this currency would likely be heavily weighted towards the Chinese yuan, at least to begin. The Chinese currency already has a toehold as a global reserve currency. Russia has begun to rely heavily on the yuan following its complete divestiture of dollars and euros, and the yuan also has precedent as a tool for settling international payment for energy now, following China's purchase, priced in yuan, of 65,000 tons of natural gas from French energy giant Total Energies just this past month. And the other BRICS members may be hesitant to rely on a currency weighted heavily towards the yuan, which would give Beijing greater influence over their economies. The difficulty posed by the necessity of central banks from the BRICS nations cooperating and setting policy in a coordinated manner managing their respective fiat currencies might simply prove too great of a hurdle for this fiat BRICS currency as well. And that is why I would rate an R5 BRICS currency basket as a relatively minor threat to US dollar hegemony. It may come to fruition, but if it does, it would just be another fiat currency with all the same counterparty risks as the dollar, just with different counterparties. It's also important to consider that de-dollarization will likely proceed regardless of whether we get a BRICS currency or not. I mean, the dollar is already losing its appeal without there even being a rival currency. But if the BRICS nations really do want to dethrone the dollar and accelerate their campaign of de-dollarization, they might consider backing a new currency with gold. If we look at global gold production ranked by country, you can see China is the world's number one producer of gold, and Russia is in second place, and even South Africa ranks in the top 10. So the BRICS nations do control quite a bit of world gold production. David Wheelock, senior vice president at the St. Louis Fed, has pointed out that the disparity in gold production globally is a significant motivator for the U.S. to avoid returning to a gold standard, saying, the U.S. mines a lot of gold, but we're not the biggest producer. The bigger suppliers of gold would have more control over our monetary policy, and there's no reason to have it because we can get the advantages of the gold standard and avoid the disadvantages without being on a gold standard. So even the Fed has acknowledged that a global gold standard would be advantageous for China and Russia, and this is exactly why this may be the route that they pursue. Not only do the BRICS nations produce a lot of gold, but they also have large stockpiles. The World Gold Council estimates that Indian households may have as many as 25,000 tons of privately held gold. That dwarfs even the largest institutional reserves in the world. China has been increasing their official gold holdings for the past five months, but there's also considerable speculation that real Chinese reserves of the yellow metal may far exceed their official holdings because not only is China the world's number one gold producer, 
they have also been a net importer of gold for years. So where is all that gold going? Now, the CCP, they're not exactly known for their transparency. So we may not learn how much gold China is actually holding until a time of their choosing, like perhaps if they decide to create a new gold-backed currency. We already know that the central banks of Russia and Iran are working jointly on a gold-backed stablecoin digital currency designed for the purpose of settling international payments, and we know that global appetite for gold is on the rise, with central banks around the world purchasing more gold in 2022 than in any other year on record. Vladimir Putin has called for the creation of a new precious metals exchange to rival the LBMA, calling it the Moscow World Standard, and he has also dumped all G7 currencies from the Russian National Wealth Fund, instead allocating it exclusively to gold and Chinese yuan. So there is ample evidence that the BRICS nations and possible future members, such as Iran, have a strong interest in the role that precious metals may play in any future multipolar monetary system. And if the BRICS do go down this route, particularly if they create a currency that would be fully backed and convertible into gold or other precious metals such as platinum or silver, this would make it a serious rival to the dollar indeed. This infographic from Visual Capitalist demonstrates quite nicely how much value the US dollar has lost over the past century. And this is a trend that is only going to accelerate given the astronomical levels of debt and deficits here in the US combined with the Fed's propensity to run the printing presses and monetize that debt at any sign of economic distress domestically. And in light of that, when posed with the question of which currency to hold in reserve, a fiat paper US dollar constantly being devalued by the forces of inflation versus a hard gold-backed note from the BRICS, many countries around the world might give a strong consideration into diversifying into the latter. And that means less organic demand for the dollar around the world and even further loss of purchasing power. But maybe it won't just be gold or precious metals exclusively. The BRICS nations, they produce a variety of commodities that could be used to back any new currency. And if Saudi Arabia and Iran join the BRICS nations in August, and they have indicated that this is the plan, then BRICS will possess a tremendous amount of the production of the world's most important commodity, crude oil. It's very convenient that China just brokered a peace deal between the two rivals just months ahead of the BRICS summit, isn't it? Saudi-Chinese cooperation in the realm of energy production is already quite deep, with the Saudis recently announcing billions of dollars of investment in two major petroleum refineries located within China, and China launched yuan-denominated oil futures at the Shanghai International Energy Exchange. And there seems to be very little stopping them from transitioning these to oil futures priced in a potential new BRICS currency. Perhaps a currency that all BRICS or BRICS Plus members also use to conduct their energy transactions. And that would of course mean an end to the petrodollar system, the system in which Saudi Arabia prices its oil exclusively in US dollars. If you need a BRICS currency to buy oil or gas from Iran or Russia or Saudi Arabia, a lot of countries around the world are going to want that currency. In fact, they're going to need it. And as we recently witnessed with China's yuan-denominated purchase of 65,000 tons of natural gas from French Total Energies, even U.S. allies are willing to transact in non-dollar currencies. So if the BRICS decides to go this route and peg their new currency to the sale of oil and gas, that too could provide some real competition to the U.S. dollar. And there's plenty of other commodities that could be used as well. Russia and South Africa, for example, they produce a large majority of the world's platinum group metals. China controls several rare earth elements, and the list goes on. So clearly, there are multiple ways that the BRICS nations could structure a currency that would provide a genuine rival to the US dollar. The real question remains, will they be able to cooperate sufficiently to do so? Will their distrust of the dollar be enough to overcome their differences. It probably depends, at least to some degree, on the US approach. If we relax the heavy-handed sanctions, if we stop weaponizing the dollar and we get our own domestic economy in order, the BRICS members may not feel sufficiently motivated to continue their de-dollarization mission. But if the geopolitical landscape deteriorates further, 
the U.S. and China become embroiled in conflict over Taiwan, if the Russia-Ukraine conflict fails to reach a peaceful resolution, and if the U.S. continues to pursue inflationary fiscal and monetary policy, then we may very well witness the dollar dethroned by a new BRICS currency. Leave me a comment down below to let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and happy stacking, everyone. I'll catch you next time. Smart Silver Stacker, out.